There hasn't been justice for, uh, for many victims uh, on, on both sides, and yet we seem to all be talking about elections right now. Uh, is there the chance that uh, without reconciliation we could return to a state of civil war in Ivory Coast? I think it's always difficult to speculate uh, in that sense. I think what we can say is that many, as I say, of the underlying causes of what happened before haven't really been addressed. I mean, so if you look simply in a justice sense, um, you, you have potentially uh, the top leaders of, of the Bagbo coalition um, that wouldn't necessarily have, have been convicted. On the Watara side, many of the commanders who were in uh, the rebellion and then ultimately in the army that brought Watara to power, uh, we and other human rights groups linked them to extrajudicial killings and to sexual violence. Many of them are still in the Ivorian army. Uh, the army itself, as we saw from the mutinies last year, hasn't gone through the types of reforms that would make it more professional, more controlled by the state. And so I think that there's undoubtedly factors that lead us to think that there are risks of, of future violence in Cote d'Ivoire. A lot, I think, is going to depend on the posture that politicians take. Uh, but again, I think it's important that we don't just talk about the future, we don't just talk about politics, we talk about victims. And victims of the conflict deserved to see justice, they deserved to see trials, and they, they got that with Laurent Bagbo. Um, but there's no doubt still that they're very disappointed by the outcome of, of this decision.